What's up guys, Asian here again with a another kind of build basics video here and today we're going to be talking about uh, the different buffs that you can have in game, how they all stack and how they affect uh, your stats. Uh, so there are plenty of different buffs in ESO um, and we're on the uh, UESP build editor because they have most of the buffs, uh, relevant buffs kind of listed here on their build editor already. Um, plus they have all the computer character statistics over here on the right hand side of the screen. So we will be able to kind of take a look and kind of see exactly which stats are being affected when we have certain buffs uh, active. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of run down this list and kind of talk about each buff in turn. Now some of the buffs we'll be able to see obviously right away what they do. You know, things like um, Major Sorcery which increases our spell damage by 20%. That's pretty obvious what it's going to do. Um, so some of them will be very very quick but others will, we might need to ex go a little bit more in depth into uh, why and how uh, you get this buff. So let's go ahead and get started. These are all in alphabetical order by the way. Um, so uh, that's the order we're going to go in. So the first one is going to be Alkosh. Uh, notice here that it says target. Um, that's because Alkosh is obviously going to be applied on an enemy. And so the Alkosh buff basically reduces your phys target's physical and spell resistance by 3010. So these are all gold value. So this is assuming that all of your pieces of Alkosh are legendary quality. Um, so that's kind of uh, what it is. So if we obviously if we do this, um, this basically decreases the enemy's resistances, which in, in turn c can be thought of as increasing our own penetration. So when we hit this button, you can see that our effective spell power and effective weapon power go up, uh, even though uh, where's our where's our penetration? Even though our spell penetration didn't go up, but uh, because this is decreasing resistances, we can think of this as increasing our own penetration. So that's what Alakash does. It's pretty straightforward. Um, Alien health bonus. This is found in Cyrodiil. Uh, I don't think you can find this in overworld PvE, um, but it's basically the Alien wells that you'll find th scattered throughout Cyrodiil. Um, if you activate it, it actually increases your health by 10%. Uh, so if you go ahead and click this, you can see it did boost our health up. Um, so this, I believe they buffed it so it lasts for, I want to say, half an hour now. It used to last only uh, for 10 minutes or until you die. I think now it lasts for 30 minutes regardless if you die, um, but I don't really do Cyrodiil too much when I PvP. I'm more of a Battlegrounds kind of PvPer. Blade Cloak, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. It decreases AoE damage taken by 25%. Uh, now the difficulty is determining what actually counts as AoE damage. Um, because when they did make this change to Blade Cloak, uh, when they buffed the amount that damage that it would reduce, um, they actually changed the way some of the attacks from bosses were coded. Uh, so some things that you might not think of as AoE damage now does count as AoE damage. Um, so obviously the classic, you know, Red on the ground counts as AoE, but there are a couple of other things that count as AoE as well that um, you might not necessarily think of. So a good example of this would be in Sanctum Ophidia against a Serpent during the Poison phase. That Poison phase, each tick counts as AoE damage, so you're going to want to keep Blade Cloak up during Poison phase. Um, and So that's kind of one thing that doesn't have a red indicator on the ground, um, but still counts as AoE damage. And there are other examples of AoE damage out there that aren't necessarily intuitive, um, but I don't have a list readily available for me in front of me right now. Uh, so that's Blade Cloak. Very, very powerful. 25% damage reduction is very strong. Uh, so if you guys checked out my damage mitigation video, uh, you know that all these things are multiplicative. So it's not going to be an exact 25% reduction, um, but since it is a uh, basically added on to that uh, long uh, multi multiplication chain, um, but it is a very nice debuff uh, decrease in the damage that you're taking as a stamina DPS. So you always want to have Deadly Cloak out uh, just for that damage reduction. These next three are all pretty much the same uh, same debuff. This is the Crusher enchant. Uh, so this is a enchant that you can place on your weapon. You have the default enchant, which reduces physical and spell resistance by 12, 16, 22. Then if you have an infused weapon, then you have a Crusher enchant and reduces it by 2108. And if you have Torx Pact, uh, which is a set bonus that increases the potency even more, it decreases it by 2741. It actually rounds down to 2740 uh, in-game. Uh, so this is off by a little bit there. But this basically acts the exact same way as, as Alkosh does. It's just a little bit weaker. Um, so there was a video that I made uh, 
about it must have been like a month and a half ago, maybe two months now ago, talking about the differences between Crusher and Alkosh and when you should use which one. Crusher is going to be uh, with Torgs is generally going to be a lot more consistent uh, than the Alkosh debuff because you do need to activate a synergy to get that Alkosh uh, debuff out. Um, so as opposed to just having the Crusher enchant out, which is just you just light attack or you do damage with a weapon uh, ability. Uh, so Crusher is going to be more consistent than Alkosh, typically speaking. Uh, so in, in my ex in my experiences running Alkosh, I can normally get up to around 60 to 70 percent uptime at Alkosh if I'm you know paying attention to when I'm activating in my synergies and when the Alkosh debuff is about to run out. Um, so it does take a little bit of concentration to kind of uh, figure out and get a very good Alkosh uptime. Uh, so that's why a lot of people are using Torogs instead of Alkosh uh, just for that consistency. Evan Armory, pretty self-explanatory, it increases our health. Uh, this is when golded out, it increases it by 1118, uh, but you will find that it is actually increases it by a little bit more and this is because uh, Evan Armory debuff is actually um, added on and it's uh, if you take a look at this uh, equation here you do actually get a little bit of the uh, percentage boosts that uh, you get from your skills and from everything else so that's why it's not necessarily a flat 1118 it's more of a uh, 1500 or so so if we're sitting at 18 and if we take it off if we're going back down to 16.5 Empower uh, increases the power of your next attack by 20%. It's actually your next direct damage attack. Uh, the wording here is a little bit off. Um, and this, this does come from uh, several sources. Uh, the most classic one is going to be whenever you cast a major skill ability. Uh, if you have the passive might of the guild, you know, give you uh, empower uh, for your next direct damage attack. You can see here the passive says direct damage. So if I were to cast something like blockade of fire, uh, this wouldn't affect, uh, this wouldn't consume the empower. I'd have to use something like uh, uh, my cliff racer because that deals direct damage. They are they uh, are changing the way empowered works. Uh, we're not entirely sure right now. It seems like they're it's going to increase the power of our light attacks instead of our direct damage attacks by 40%. Um, but uh, we'll see what actually happens when uh, Somerset Isles is released on the PTS. The Exploiter uh, off balance. Uh, this is a passive under the CP line. I believe it is under the Ritual here. So when you have 75 points into the Ritual Constellation, you get the Exploiter passive, which increases your damage done against off-balance enemy by 10%. So if we go ahead and turn that on here, you'll find that our effective spell power does go up, because um, it is assuming that you are hitting an off-balance enemy. Now do remember that in Dragon Bones, they changed the way off-balance worked, so now um, you have a 5 second duration for off-balance, then the enemy is immune for 15 seconds afterwards, uh, so you're really going to get about a 25% uptime on off-balance, realistically. Um, so Exploiter used to be very, very powerful pre- Dragon Bones when there was no cooldown on off-balance, but now that there is a, a 15 second cooldown, Exploiter is not quite as strong as it used to be. Um, stamina DPS, you're always going to be having this exploiter passive uh, just because all of your blue CP nodes that you invest in are under the ritual. However, magic DPS, uh, some builds do still build around exploiter, but a lot of builds kind of don't anymore. It's kind of up to you if you want to build around it. You can see here that when you do have exploiter out and it is active, you get a pretty nice boost to your spell damage, uh, spell power. So you can see here it went from 8 0.1 to about 8.8 .8. so it is a nice boost but the uptime is kind of what killed the effectiveness of it firelight is a buff that you can find in the overworld uh, so there are certain areas uh, you can find this in basically in each of the different alliance zones so all 15 base game zones minus cold harbor uh, basically what you'll find are you have two people arguing over a uh, a campfire that doesn't that's not lit and then when you go ahead and light it uh, it increases your max stamina by five percent for I want to say it's 20 minutes um, and this does carry over to trials and things like that um, but it is a random occurrence and they are only found in fixed spots uh, if you do happen to come across the two people with a lit campfire you can still activate the campfire to get the firelight boost um, so that's uh, not a buff that you'll see very often just because of the RNG nature and the fact that nobody really wants to run around all 15 zones trying to find that one spawn um, so you're not really going to be seeing this too much. Hercene's Rage uh, this is a uh, buff from the vamp uh, not vampire werewolf skill line so if we go over here to werewolf Hercene's uh, let's see I think I have to, yeah, so it's under Hercene's Rage here. 
Uh, so if you use Hercene's Rage, you get the heal, plus you increase your weapon damage by 10% for 20 seconds. Uh, so this, I believe, does stack. So if we take a look at our weapon damage here, 1593. Uh, so if we do that, it should boost it by more than uh, 1500. So 1752. Uh, so that's actually about 10%. Uh, I just realized we, I am on a Magicka class, so we will get closer to 10%. But this is, um, I, I believe this is uh, multiplicative with the other percentage boosts to weapon damage. Uh, let me see real quick. Uh, let's rage, activate that. So you can see here it's under buff, uh, so it is additive to uh, your skill weapon damage uh, as well. So it does uh, stack on top of that. And skill weapon damage comes from things like uh, major brutality. So if you have major brutality and then you have Hercene's Rage, it's a 30% increase uh, to your weapon damage. So it does scale additively. Uh, so you, we're not really going to be seeing this too much in endgame PvE content because werewolves generally aren't uh, very good uh, for PvE, but if you are uh, running around in werewolf form, uh, I have actually seen a couple of guilds do just for fun, like you know a fun uh, werewolf run of VAA or something like that. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. Hercene's Veneer is a medium armor set that you can find from, um, I believe it's Selene's Web. The 5 piece increases stamina regen by 12% uh, for you and up to 11 people within 28 meters of you. So it's basically like uh, the stamina version of Worm, but instead of cost reduction, it's stamina regen. So it's not quite as strong as Worm. Um, and just it's because it's not cost and it's regen, uh, you won't really be seeing healers using this um, at all. Added on to the fact that it is a medium armor set as well. Uh, so if anybody's going to be wearing it, it's going to be a stamina DPS. Um, and that's not really that great. 12% uh, stamina regen is is noticeable, but ultimately uh, it just doesn't provide as much DPS as any of the other uh, sets that you typically wear as a stamina DPS. So, don't really, you, so you won't really be seeing Hercene's Veneer used that much. Magicka Attunement, uh, so this is a Craglorn specific buff, so you need to be in Craglorn to, to get this buff. Uh, there are various world bosses around Craglorn, there's three different types. Uh, you have the Nern Crux Mine, you have a, um, a uh, I think it's called an Animus Stone, and then you have, I want to say, uh, uh, a Regatta Statue uh, fight. Um, and Magicka Attunement comes from the Animus Stone, so you basically fight a bunch of Atronax and Spell Fiends, uh, and then the uh, Animus Stone basically turns yellow, and then you can get this buff. It basically increases your spell resistance by 1320 while, while you're in Kraglorn, so this does actually carry over to the Kraglorn Trial, Sanctum of Fidia, Hell Ra, um, so I believe this lasts for 30, 30 minutes, um, so you could realistically get this buff before you do a Kraglorn trial if you want to improve your survivability by a little bit because this does stack on top of your um, major ward and minor ward and so it'll give you that 2% additional damage mitigation uh, if if you want. Uh, some some guilds do it, a lot of uh, progression guilds that are you know just very very new to vet trials will sometimes do this um, but generally speaking it's not uh, something that you find many people doing. And now we're moving on to the named buffs. So before we start going over the named buffs, I do want to mention that named buffs cannot stack on top of each other. So for Major Berserk, for example, you can't have two Major Berserks and increase your damage done by 50%. You'll only basically refresh. The second Major Berserk will refresh the duration of your first Major Berserk. So these named buffs cannot be stacked on top of each other. So Major Berserk increases damage done by 25%. There's two sources of Major Berserk that I know of. Uh, the Storm Atronach Synergy, uh, that is the ultimate for uh, Sorcerers. Uh, if, you, somebody, if somebody else activates the Synergy, then they get Major Berserk for 8 seconds, and the Atronach gets Major Berserk for 8 seconds, so that's the most consistent source of Major Berserk. The other source is a set, I believe it's called Himjaz Retribution. Uh, that's a medium armor set from, um, what's it called? Ruins of Mazatun, um, and it's you get it every... Uh, for three seconds when you kill an enemy or an enemy is killed within uh, I think it's like 20 meters of you so not very consistent and obviously not very useful in vet trials major breach decreases spell resistance by 50 to 80 uh, that's pretty self-explanatory um, so uh, you can think of this as a boost to your own penetration um, so that's kind of pretty much the exact same thing as Alkash and Crusher just only spell resistance major brutality increases weapon damage by 20% so uh, the way this works uh, if we take a look over here at the weapon damage. Let me just activate it. Um, so you saw this again with um, 
Hercene's Rage, uh, and so this basically acts stacks additively to that. So if we had Hercene's Rage active, this would become 30%. Um, and basically, the way Major Brutality and Major Sorcery, which is the uh, spell damage buff, works, is that it is calculated at the very end. So it basically takes your item weapon damage, your set weapon damage, your Mundus weapon damage, and then all that is then multiplied by your percentage buffs uh, by your weapon damage. So this is considered the base. Uh, so basically your weapon, uh, how much damage it does, your weapon deals, and then how much damage you're getting from your sets, and then whether you're using the Apprentice or the Warrior Mundus stones. And then all that is multiplied by the uh, percentage buff that you get to weapon damage. So there are other buffs uh, to weapon damage that are not named buffs, and um, those fall under skill weapon damage buffs. So that would be something like Fighter's Guild. Uh, so so Fighter's Guild, for example, Flawless Dawnbreaker would give you 8% additional weapon damage, so that would stack additively with Major Brutality, so you would increase it by 28%. So that's how Major Brutality works. Major Defile decreases health healing taken and your health regen by 30%. Uh, this is much more commonly found in PvP. You won't really be seeing this used in PvE. Um, it's a really, really powerful debuff in PvP, though. Decreasing your healing taken by 30% is huge. So healing is already reduced by 50% from your tooltip indicator on in PvP. So if you normally, if your Breath of Life heals normally for let's say 8,000, it would only heal for 4,000 in Cyrodiil. So you take, you know, you reduce that by 30%, and you know your heals are not nearly as strong. I believe it's a 2800 heal. Um, this also decreases health regen as well. So, you know, my regen, for example, here is... Well, I'm a PvE build and a vampire, so I'm at 358.6. So, you know, it, it's, it is a pretty noticeable debuff. Um, so, very powerful. I'm not 100% sure of all the sources of Major Defile. Um, I believe most of it comes from armor sets, though. Um, and I think Incapacitating Strike also if inflicts Major Defile. There are a couple of ultimates that inflict Major Defile. Uh, major Endurance increases Stamina Regen by 20%. So if we go over and look at Stamina Regen, let me just activate it. So Stamina Regen here, this would under buff, and this is acts very similarly to uh, or any buff to your weapon damage. So this entire ugly mess here is actually your base. And so after you it calculates out your base, then it calculates out your multiplicative increases. And so most of them are additive with each other. So if we had points into Mooncalf, for instance, and we had 15% uh, stamina regen, this would be additively uh, to Major Endurance. So you would be hitting 35%. And so that's kind of how all this stuff works. So generally speaking, um, with all these like increase your X by 20% or 10% or whatever, you always have what's called a base amount. And so this is that this number right here before this uh, multiplicate this uh, asterisk which indicates multiplication. So you can see here for stamina regen for example your food actually counts towards your base so your food regen is boosted by the major endurance uh, buffs and any other sort of percentage buff that you get for stamina regen. So that's how uh, these regen stuff works. Major Evasion increases dodge chance by 15%. Um, this can be gained from a couple of sources. The most common one is going to be Shuffle, which is a medium armor skill. Uh, Nightblades can use something like Mirage to get Major Evasion. Uh, you, you'll sometimes see this used more often in PvP, uh, and it's more, less so for the Major Evasion and more so for the uh, the uh, Snare immu immuni Immunity uh, from, from Shuffle. So that's major evasion. Tanks used to run shuffle too back when Tavas, uh, back, back when you could use shuffle on he with heavy armor. Um, but since they changed it, uh, so you have to wear five pieces of medium armor, you don't really see major evasion out much anymore. Major expedition, sometimes more commonly known as rapids, because uh, the skill rapids does give you its major expedition. Uh, so this increases movement speed and mount speed by 30%. Uh, so this is just more for speeding around if you're collecting resources, if you're traveling from keep to keep in PV in Cyrodiil, that kind of stuff. Major force increases your critical damage done by 15%. So major force uh, and minor force are both additive. So crit damage modifier, if you go over here, you can see here it's pretty much all additive. There is one multiplication term here, skill 2.crit damage, but I'm not sure uh, what, what skill 2.crit damage is. Um, so it's pretty much all additive, so that 15% is going to be additive to uh, my spell to crit damage. So if you can see here, it goes from 70% to 85%. Major Fortitude is health regen, so this acts the same way as Endurance, just with health regen. 
Major fracture decreases physical resistance by 50 to 80, so again, you can think of it as an increase to your own penetration. Major heroism grants three ultimate every one second for nine seconds. As far as I'm aware, there's only two sources of major heroism. Shimmering Shield, which is a warden ability, and then there is a crafted set, uh, Daedric Trickery, which could give you major heroism. It gives you one of five different major buffs. Um, so th you won't really be seeing major heroism used too much. It's really, really powerful on wardens, both in PvP and PvE, because three ultimate every one second basically doubles your ultimate gain. You're, you gain three ultimate every one second, uh, just naturally from combat, from healing somebody with, who's gaining ultimate or using a light or heavy attack. Uh, so. Major Heroism is a very, very powerful buff, um, and it is, I think it's a very good thing that there's only two sources of it, and only one of them is consistent. Major Intellect is basically the exact same thing as Major Fortitude and Endurance, just with Magicka Regen. Major Maim decreases damage done by 30%. Uh, so this uh, is pretty powerful in PvP, uh, and it is very useful in PvE as well in certain scenarios. So the classic source of Major Maim that I know of is going to be coming from Nova, the... Uh, the um, the Templar Ultimate, uh, so that it basically decreases damage done by 30%, and this does affect um, PvE mobs as well, so bosses, just like it affects players. Um, so this is a very powerful debuff in the game um, that's used very, very often, for example, in a lot of execute phases, a lot of guilds that progress through, let's say, through an archive hard mode against the mage execute phase, they'll sometimes have uh, one of their healers or one of their Templar DPS, stamina, stamina Templar typically, uh, run Nova for that damage reduction because that'll help them survive and get through that execute phase a lot faster. Uh, Halls of Fabrication, most guilds will run at least one Nova uh, while they're progressing either through Halls Normal on Vet or Halls Hard Mode. Major Mending increases healing done by 25%. Uh, there are several sources of Major Mending. Um, so Dragonites can get Major Mending from using Igneous Shields. Uh, Wardens can get Major Mending. They have a passive uh, that activates when you heal somebody below, I want to say, like 60% health or something. Uh, so this is pretty strong for healing done. Strong in both PvP and in PvE. Um, but uh, Templars don't have this. They only have Minor Mending, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, so that's something just to keep in mind. So the uh, healing done, uh, let's see here. Healing done is a uh, additive thing, so everything is additive to each other. So if you have like 100 points into Blessed, it'd be 15 plus 25 equals 40. Uh, so you'd have 40 additional percent additional healing done if you have Major Mending and you have 100 points into Blessed. So that's how uh, healing done works. Damage done too. Uh, let me see if I can find damage done. Uh, shield damage done. Dot, dot damage done. All right. So direct damage done. So, there, so right now we have a boost to direct damage done uh, from our CP. Let me see if there's something. Uh, okay, here. So damage done, you have 11% buff, uh, and that's coming from skills and a buff. So this is coming from um, from Minor Slayer. This is coming from probably a Warden passive. So if I hit Major Maim. My damage done decreases by to negative 19%. So this is a uh, additive buff. So every sort of thing that's uh, damage done is additive with each other. Uh, so that's how that works out. Uh, the, as far as I know, there's only a uh, minor maim is applied to you in PvE content. And that comes from Saint Thelms in Asylum. Uh, so that's the only source of of maim from PvE mobs. Major Prophecy increases spell crit by 2191. Uh, so this increases our crit by 10%. Uh, I have this enabled by Inner Light, so I can't. I can't toggle it on or off, actually. Um, but basically, spell crit chance here. Spell crit chance. Uh, or this is all super complicated. Uh, but you can see here that 2191 is equal to 10% additional crit chance here. So it's about 219 uh, crit chance is equal to 1% on your um, on your um, what's it called character sheet. Uh, so that's how uh, crit chance works. Major protection decreases damage taken by 30%. Again, this is very useful both in PvP and PvE. They're capable sources of major protection. The classic ones that I can think of are uh, the Warden Northern Storm ulti, and then the um, Nightblade's Veil of Darkness or something like that, um, their Veil ultimate. Uh, so this is additive as well, so all sources of decreasing damage taken or increasing damage taken is additive with each other. So that's how um, those work out. And so this does affect uh, you, and it does affect damage you take from players and PvE mobs alike. 
Major resolves increase physical resistance by 5280. Uh, so resistances scale by about 660. Uh, so this works out to be about an 8% reduction in physical damage taken. Um, roughly, it could be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on specifics, uh, especially if you're in PvP. Um, but that's generally how resistance scale to damage taken. Major Savagery is Weapon Crit, same thing as Major Prophecy. Major Slayer increases damage done by 15%, so this is pretty much the opposite of Major Maim, which increases our damage done by 15%. So this comes from War Machine and Master Architect, and um, Major Slayer and Minor Slayer only affect PvE mobs, and they only affect mobs that are in Dungeons or Trials. So if you're in Overland content, Major Slayer and Minor Slayer doesn't impact your damage done at all. So that's the caveat to Major and Minor Slayer. Major Sorcery increases damage, your spell damage by 20%. Major Vitality increases your healing taken by 30%. Um, so this is also additive. So if you have Major and Minor Vitality, they add together. If you have uh, points into Quick Recovery, that is additive to Major, major Vitality. So if you have like 5% from Quick Recovery and you, then you get Major Vitality, you would be increasing your damage taken by 35%. Uh, major Ward increases Spell Resistance, so this is the exact same thing as my Major Resolve, just with Spell Resistance. Mechanical Acuity is counted as a buff, and this basically, in-game, it's coded as increasing your Spell and Weapon Crit by 21... Uh, 21,910, which is equal to 100 crit. Uh, so if you do have an older version of um, combat metrics, when you see that your crit chance is like 145%, that's why. Um, that's because the QD buff in-game actually just adds this amount to your crit chance. So uh, obviously your character sheet can't display more than 100%, so that's why. Uh, minor Aegis. Where did, did we skip over Major Aegis? Oh, they don't even have Major Aegis over here. Okay, so that's why. So Aegis uh, decreases damage taken by 5%, and again, just like with Slayer, this only affects PvE mobs uh, in dungeons and trials. So if it's not a PvE mob in a dungeon or a trial, this doesn't affect it at all. It doesn't affect uh, PvP. It doesn't affect players either. So Aegis comes from several different sources. Uh, they're, they're Normally all trial sets, so like Twilight Remedy, for instance, gives you Minor Aegis as a three-piece. Um, Automated Defense from Halls of Fabrication gives you Minor Aegis as a three-piece. Um, so those are your your sources of Minor Aegis. There is also Major Aegis as well, which comes from um, Automated Defense, and I am currently blanking on the uh, other source, the Light Armor source of Major Aegis, but those are the two sources of Major Aegis in-game. And so the rest of these are all... Um, Basically the exact same name buffs, just in minor form, so they're a little bit weaker. Um, but because they have different names, you can stack them on top of each other. So you can go with Minor Berserk and Major Berserk, for instance. Those two will stack on top of each other. So we won't be going over all of these um, just because they, we've already kind of went over them. They're just, they're major, major ones, just a little bit weaker. Minor Vulnerability, um, so this increases damage taken by 8%. This affects both players and uh, PvE mobs. Um, so for PvE, Minor Vulnerability is basically the exact same thing as Concuss. Uh, so that's where uh, Vulnerability comes into play. There is, I believe, a Major Vulnerability as well, but you can't actually um, get the debuff in-game. Uh, you can't apply it to anybody in-game. There's no source right now. Uh, but I believe it is coded in the game right now. So Minor Vulnerability, like I said, is usually comes from shock damage. Any source of shock damage besides light attacks and heavy attacks has a chance of proccing Minor Vulnerability. Infallible Aether will also proc Minor Vulnerability on a heavy attack. And this does scale additively to all other sources of increased damage taken. Night Mother's Gaze reduces target's physical resistance by 2580. Uh, this is on critical hits. Uh, so this is basically Alkosh just with uh, a different set. So this does stack with Alkosh and Crusher and um, Major... Um, and all your Major Breach... Uh, not Major Breach, Major Fracture and things like that. Uh, Nurn Crux Infusion. So this is much like the Magicka Attunement one that we saw up here. Uh, so Nurn Crux Infusion comes from the world bosses in Kragalorn, the Nurn Crux Mines. So when you finish that world boss event, uh, you can get the buff, which increases your physical resistance by 1320 while in Kraglorn. So this does also affect um, Kraglorn Trials as well. And again, this is another 2% increase, and it does stack with Minor Ward, Minor Resolve, all that stuff. Spell Power Cure, the most 
powerful buff that a healer can give their DPS. So this increases weapon and spell damage by 2580. Um, so this, I believe, does count towards the base increase. So this is actually affected by your percentage increases as well. Uh, so that's why spell power cure is very, very strong because that 2258 is added on to your current base spell and weapon damage and then that entire thing is buffed further by 20%. So it's actually a much greater boost than 2580 or 258, I should say. Slender Flame is another set that decreases physical resistance, this time on fully charged heavy attacks. And again, this does stack with Night Mother's Gaze, Major Fracture, Alkosh, Crusher. Warhorn does have a buff in game which increases your magicka and stamina by 10%. Um, it also gives you, let's see if it's here, minor, not minor fortitude. Where is it? Uh, I can't seem to find it. Oh, minor, minor toughness. Uh, so that increases your health by 10%. Uh, so that's what Warhorn gives you. They changed it. I believe it was back in Horns of the Reach. Uh, it used to be that minor uh, minor toughness didn't exist in game. Uh, no, it, it was introduced in Morrowind uh, with the Wardens, because Wardens can give minor toughness through a passive through their green balance line. It used to not exist before Morrowind, but then they added in minor toughness. Uh, and so Warhorn now gives minor toughness uh, and then it increases magic and stamina by 10%. So because they changed the health increase from Warhorn from a unnamed buff to a named buff, minor toughness doesn't stack on top of each other. So um, if you have a Warden healer in group, for example, um, that minor toughness is going to be 100% up, up pretty much all the time compared to just using Warhorn. Weapon damage in chat increases weapon and spell damage by 452 when golded out. Uh, I believe this is actually infused. Uh, the non-infused version is weaker. Uh, I believe it's like 340 something or, or, or something like that. So this is actually the infused version of weapon damage in chat. Uh, but just like with spell power cure, this is added on to the base amount. So this 452 is then affected by percentage increases to weapon and spell damage. So it ends up being very, a very powerful, um, very powerful enchantment to have, so pretty much all DPS run weapon damage enchants on one of their bars. Worm's Raiment, um, so this decreases magic cost by 4%, um, so this it comes from the Worm's Raiment set, uh, which typically is worn by a healer, so this decreases your magic cost by 4%. Any magic cost reduction is additive, so, uh, so if you ha are a Breton and you have 3% additional magic cost reduction, this is additive to Worm's Raiment, so you get a 7% reduction in your magic cost. Then finally, this is the last buff that we're going to be talking about, is Yokudin Might. So this comes from the Yokudin uh, slash Regatta statue fight world bosses in Kraglorn. This increases damage done while in Kraglorn by 8%, and yes, this does work in Kraglorn Trials. So, if you are a progression guild working through, let's say, AA, uh, AA HRC, or SO, this only lasts for 30, 30 minutes, so it's not, um, you probably won't make it to the last boss by the time it, and, uh, by the time it um, expires, but it, it, it is a nice buff to have. It does stack with Minor Berserk, Major Berserk, and all the other stuff, uh, so it, some, some guilds might consider it useful to, uh, oops, sorry. Some guilds might consider it useful to have this Yokudin might buff before they do a VSO or VHRC or VAA trial. Just something to consider there. Alright, uh, so that is it for this video. I know that was a lot of buffs to go through. Um, so there are m many, many different sources uh, for each of these, all these different buffs. Um, there's so many that I believe if I were to make a video on all the different sources, it would probably take over an hour for me to go through all the different sources because I don't even know where all of them come from. Uh, so just be on the lookout. So now that you know what these minor buffs are named and kind of how they affect your stats, hopefully it'll give you a little bit more insight into how to best optimize your build for whatever content that you are going to end up doing. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.